So what are my credentials? Why should you trust me about my opinion about the SEMS degree? Well, I have recently finished all my courses for SEMS. So that means that I had my first semester last year in autumn. So I had my um, semester at my home university, Copenhagen Business School. And in the spring, I had my exchange semester at the London School of Economics and Political Science. So now let's move on to the application process and the requirements. I will be looking down at my notes sometimes, so that's why uh, I'm looking down. And that's only because I don't want to forget anything. When it comes to the stages of the recruitment, uh, they generally had two. So the first one was document submission, and then if you passed this, you needed to um, show up for either a presentation or group project, depending on the university. When so let's move on to the stage number one. When it comes to the documents you needed to submit, the first one was your documents uh, in terms of your education. So for example, your bachelor's diploma. You would need to have a bachelor's diploma with a grade of seven, at least at Copenhagen Business School, and it of course differs um, between the universities. You would also need to submit any grades you had for your master program, if you had any at the time. Then the second thing you needed to submit is the proof um, that you were able to speak three languages, so English, then your mother tongue, and then one additional language. The next thing you needed to submit were two letters of recommendation. And that would be, for example, professors, colleagues, uh, bosses, those type of authority figures. I um, actually had letters of recommendations from my workplace, so I just used those. Then the next thing uh, you needed to submit was a motivation letter. So I needed to explain why SEMS was a good fit for you and how you would benefit from the program and why that's a good fit for you, generally speaking. The next thing you needed to submit was group work reflections. And here I submitted also about my work experience, but you were free to choose whatever group work you wanted to write about. And I think this particular letter, um, like group work reflections letter, um, it was CBS specific. It can differ from school to school what exactly you needed to submit. Then the last thing you need to submit was your CV. And it's my personal opinion that having some kind of brand name or recognizable company on your CV is definitely a helpful factor in terms of progressing with your application. And now let's move on to the stage number two, which is group work or presentation. Because of COVID, we actually moved um, all of the recruitment online. So I needed to um, create a PowerPoint in which I analyzed a certain business problem and my solutions to it. And then we had a little bit of a discussion about the, this particular problem and then also some more general questions about my CV. So that entire interview took maybe 30 minutes. And those are the only two stages of interviews. Um, when it comes to the admission statistics, um, there's about 1,300 students being admitted to SAMS every year. At Copenhagen Business School, we had about 50 students that were admitted. Uh, it is my personal opinion that about half of the students who are applicable and um, fulfill all the other requirements are actually admitted um, based on my anecdotal evidence and a little bit of research, but it can vary that it can vary vastly amongst the universities. So I wouldn't be able to provide any um, official statistics as STEMS doesn't really provide any, um, at least that I could find. So what is the structure of the program? Generally speaking, SEMS has uh, three semesters. So you will have your first semester that you spend at your, let's say, home university, second semester that you go on exchange on, and those are interchangeable. And then you also have a third semester, which is an internship. And that can be done before or after the SEMS um, two other semesters. And that's generally last about eight consecutive weeks. When it comes to the courses, um, generally speaking, there's only two mandatory courses you need to take through SEMS, and this is Global Strategic Management and Global Leadership. All other courses, the remaining um, 45 ECTS points are just electives and other research projects, for example. You would generally be exposed to many different exam types. So you would have student exams, uh, group projects, group projects with oral defense, written assignments, so all types of different assignments. I don't want to bore you to death with all the courses I took because I don't think it's that interesting, but I just wanted to point out your attention to the requirement of 
a minimum five ECTS points going, going into the hard skills, which means quantitative uh, subjects. So in, um, in my case, I actually took two subjects that fulfilled that um, requirement. Um, I only needed to take one, but uh, it kind of turned out that I took two. Um, the first one was business analytics at Copenhagen Business School, and the second was entrepreneurial finance at the London School of Economics. And here maybe I'll point my opinion to the business analytics course um, provided by SEMS. I wasn't that much of a fan of it. I don't think it was very like real life experience kind of subject. Um, unfortunately, within that um, business analytics course, we pretty much repeated um, statistics. We used this program called STATA, which is fairly academic program. Um, and we just, yeah, we, we just did a bunch of statistical analysis, which wasn't maybe as practical and business oriented as I hoped uh, it was gonna be. When it comes to the um, entrepreneurial finance course, on the other hand, I really enjoyed it. It was mostly, um, we did a lot of Excel models. We analyzed startups um, actions and the results. And then we also created many Excel models to understand those situations better. And let's say we did cap tables where we were able to conduct analysis on those startups, which I think was much more useful um, than the statistics course in the business analytics part. Um, so all exams also differed quite vastly. So for the business analytics course, we had a sit-in exam. Uh, so we just went and we had our exams on computers in a big hall. And then the entrepreneurial finance, we just had uh, weekly or bi-weekly assignments that we needed to submit and they were graded. And then at the end of the course, we also needed to create a short presentation uh, about the business case. So when it comes to, let's say, your master thesis alongside those studies, master thesis is generally not a part of your STEMS program. It is something you do with your normal master program and then you need to kind of work around your STEM studies to also finalize the master thesis. So what you could do, and um, I've generated loads of people do that, is that they would postpone the master thesis, so they would write it after they're done with SEMS. And that's generally um, fairly accepted and you don't get punished for it, you get like an additional exam attempt um, just to you know, be a part of SEMS. Some people, uh, some of my uh, classmates actually did something opposite, so they wrote their thesis before they started SEMS, so they were already free and they were able to enjoy their um, their SEMS year without any um, master thesis hanging above them. So that was also one way to go about it. Well, when it comes to the seminars, um, you must attend, or you have to attend multiples of them. And generally there is one block seminar before the semester, before your first semester, and there's also global citizenship seminar um, before your second semester. The first semester, the block seminar is graded. So you need to, after the week of the courses, you actually needed to write um, a 10 page exam to be graded on it. At least at CBS, it could differ from school to school. And for the global citizenship seminar, I didn't need to have any exam. We just um, had that seminar for two days. We talked about sustainable development goals and pretty much that, that was it. Um, when it comes to skill seminars, I think that is one of the really interesting parts about SEMS that you are allowed or required um, even to participate in a few of those seminars to get ECTS points um, for them. And I thought that they were quite useful. Generally speaking, the ones organized by companies were better. So for example, I went for one called Corporate Strategy, Building an Advantage Portfolio, organized by a company, definitely great, definitely would recommend it. Um, some of them were, for example, how to manage your boss, a business communication, so those type of things. Um, I thought most of them were quite useful and helped you get to know some more practical knowledge about the business environment. One of those skill seminars that I particularly enjoyed was actually um, to build your digital skills. Um, they, at LSE, they had this digital skills lab where you could learn Excel or PowerPoint or Word, and then they had those courses, you were able to take those um, to fulfill those skill seminar requirements, which I think was great. It was actually fairly useful, and I've learned a few new skills um, through that. Then there's another thing uh, called a research project. Um, you are able to take that research project instead of one of the courses, um, and it's generally a stepping stone to your master thesis. That's what they call it. 
so you're able to write your um, research project and then use parts of it into your master uh, master thesis. Um, that's what I did uh, because I thought it was an easier way to um, form your semester. So you were able to kind of you were forced more or less to write a part of your thesis at the very beginning of your STEMS program. Um, but looking back, I would I don't think I would have done that. I think I would have taken a regular course that would have been more interesting. Um, I didn't really take the, that much learning from the research project. Um, in my personal opinion, it wasn't that useful. If you want to have more questions about it or maybe my reasoning uh, of it, please feel free to reach out. Um, when it comes to another project, there's also business project, and that's actually worth 15 ECTS points, and that's a part of your semester number two. And generally speaking, how it works, you are connected with one of the corporate partners uh, or one of the companies that are collaborating with SEMS and they have a specific business issue that they would like SEMSIS to solve. And then, the, then they divide you into groups of four to six students and you need to solve that particular problem over the course of, I believe it's like two months. Um, generally speaking, they would connect you to, to a company that could be within your country or maybe abroad. So it's, it differs quite dramatically between the projects. The client or the company that you're collaborating with, it can be anything um, from other corporate partners list. So that could be Google, that could be Boston Consulting Group, and more or less any company from that list. Um, you are generally able to submit your preferences, but you're not guaranteed that you will get to work on a project that you actually want to work on. So they will take into consideration, but they have um, the way they the way they're choosing uh, students for the project differs um, from school to school, so it's difficult to say how it's how it works everywhere. However, at LSE, what they did, they asked us to submit the list of three projects we we're most interested in without order, which is a little weird, but they just said three projects we we're most interested in, and then they tried to match us um, amongst the projects that were available. Um, when it comes to my project, I was a little bit disappointed that we didn't get to see the um, the office of that company, even though we were able to, um, I mean, it was within the same country, uh, but there wasn't any particular facilitation that would allow us to go, uh, go there. Even though I know that some of the other students in other countries or uh, that work with other companies were uh, flown, for example, to different offices and they were able to present that, present their findings um, in a more, um, I would say in a nicer setting because they would be working with that company and they would be able to go to their headquarters, let's say, and present and talk about their findings. So it depends quite, um, quite dramatically on the company you're working with. And then when it comes to the internship, you are generally free to choose whatever company you want to work for uh, for the internship. Uh, the only requirement is that it cannot overlap with any of the semester activities. And then you're generally speaking are able to just work for a company for that particular period of eight weeks, have a supervisor there, and that would be most often approved. Uh, in my case, I wanted to go for the entrepreneurial internship and I had quite a lot of problems with getting it approved. Um, but it's, I think it's a fairly niche case uh, for me as most students just choose to work for a company. And um, that's a much more streamlined process. Um, it's generally just an application on the internal SEMS website where you need to submit information about the company and about your role. And then it's generally approved if it's deemed that it is on a sufficient, uh, sufficiently high level. So one more thing that needs to be fulfilled are language requirements. At my university, we needed to submit information that we're able to speak three languages from the get-go, but I know that some other universities don't have those requirements, and then you're able to, or like you, you need to learn the language um, throughout your STEMS uh, degree, and then you need to prove that you have learned the language before the time that you graduate. 